Lift your hands and bless him for tonight. We're chasing after you. We're not ashamed of it, O oh God. This is why we are here. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. In one minute, just give him all the praise. And ask him to bless you tonight by the power of your Holy Spirit. Bless us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. They grow from strength to strength as many as appear before him in Zion. They grow from strength to strength. Strength to strength. They grow from strength to strength as many as appear before him in Zion. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you to do something remarkable in our lives tonight. Expose us to the truth of your word. And let the entrance of your word bring light unto us. And even understanding. We give you praise tonight. Let the name of the Lord be exalted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just walk around to 10, 15 people. Just greet them. Tell them it's good to see you. And then we'll get to the business of the night. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The person you may be ignoring may be your destiny helper. If I were you, I would do it again with every sense of honor and seriousness. Come on now. Go ahead. Implicate yourself for good. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Great are you, Lord. Great. Just lift your hands and worship Him. Great are you, Lord. Strong and mighty in our midst. Great are you, Lord. Great Sing it one more time. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Shika baba na 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 bo. Hallelujah. We're going to pray tonight, so um, I'd like you to prepare your heart. Let me invite all those who are leaving from tomorrow for NYSC. Please come out quickly. Come and receive grace. Celebrate them and fresh grace. We're proud of you. We're proud of what God is doing.
celebrate them koinonia this is the work of god hallelujah isaiah chapter 6 Verse six. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongue from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, "Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged." Verse eight. And this is the call that God is giving every one of you. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who will go for us Then said I here am I send me Hallelujah He said here am I send me Father in the name that is above all names I stretch my hands upon your people You have kept them And David said the God who gave the bear the God who gave the lion he will also give this uncircumcised Philistine There is a hand that lifted you it will uphold you till the end and you will not be afraid This is a prophetic word to you The Lord is your light and he's the light of your life you should not be afraid the hand that guided you will uphold you till the end you will not be afraid For the grace that brought you through will uphold you till the end and you will not be afraid There is a voice that speaks for you it will uphold you till the end you will not be afraid there is a seal that separates you it will uphold you till the end you will not be afraid and you will go from faith to faith from glory to glory i prophesy to you and you will go from faith to faith from glory to glory and you forever be chasing after him you be chasing after him all the days of your life you forever be chasing after him you be chasing after him when it was time for david to face goliath saul was so intimidated by the size of david he said i have extra weapons to give you and david said no i was not taught with these weapons it was not the javelin and all of this there 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 was a secret arsenal let me tell you brothers and sisters that which you have been given is enough to make you great men will offer you all kinds of options anything that was not part of the tool for your training is not qualified to be with you in the day of battle we want to pray 
The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Many have come and failed woefully. But there is a hand that can take a man and sustain him. And Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of all. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. The prophet said, I have been instructed to bless and this I have done. And it cannot be reversed. In the name that is above all names. May you be distinguished everywhere you go. May there be an anointing upon your life. That separates you out of the crowd. Because you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Let God, even your God. May he anoint you with an oil of gladness. That makes you always above your fellows. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will receive the help of God. Where your strength fails, may the anointing upon you speak for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none see it restore. I send a prophetic word ahead of you that everything that wants to take you for a prey, let there be a prophecy that says restore in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says destroy it not for there is a blessing in it. I declare that as a result of the blessing of the Lord upon you, you become incorruptible in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who are thou mounting before Zerubbabel? He said, Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. I decree and I declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will do much for the kingdom. You will do much for the kingdom. Where there is no voice to speak for you, may you hear a voice from heaven that says, This is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter, and may it command the world to hear you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. The Bible says. See I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. I pray that every territory you enter. Those powers in those territories remain subject to you forever. Because the Bible says, let every soul be subject to higher powers. And I speak over your life in the name that is above all names. Every devil of darkness submits to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, you shall not be afraid of the arrow that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence. And that which wasted at noonday. He said, a thousand shall fall by your side. And 10,000 by your right side. But none shall harm you. With your eyes shall you watch. And behold the reward of the wicked. I declare that you are preserved. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For his name is unto you a strong tower. And you will run and find refuge. In the name of Jesus I declare. May you suck honey out of the rock. And may your feet. Be honored and adorned with butter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for you let your hand be strengthened by the Lord Most High may the Lord amplify your efforts he told Abraham lift up your eyes and see he said for as far as your eyes can see I have given it unto you I declare although you will go to a foreign land I speak to the earth of that territory to bring out his good and give to you said i will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places isaiah 48 says that i am the lord that teacheth thy hands to profit i command that these hands will profit in the name of jesus christ just like daniel through the dispensation of three kings he was exalted may you be exalted in the mighty name of jesus christ i activate Breakthrough in your life through the ministry of destiny helpers. 
Whoever needs to hold your hands to go to the next level, may my God bring them into your life. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Whoever needs to send for you, I prophesy in the name that is above all names. I activate the ministry of the wine pressers and the bakers. May they recommend you in high places. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? Where your qualification cannot take you, like Mephibosheth, may you still sit and dine with kings. The Bible says, Gentiles shall come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. He said, your gates shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. The Bible says, where you have been deserted so that no man goes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I declare, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will not backslide, you will not lose this that you For the Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of our God. He said, even in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. You will be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. When others are waiting for rainy season, you are planted by a permanent source of supply. And the Bible says, as a result, you will yield its fruit in season and its leaf will not wither. Whatever he doeth prospers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let the mark of God be upon you that everyone that sees you will know that God is with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I strengthen your hands. May God trust you with wealth. May God trust you with grace. May God trust you with leadership. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we cause death over your life. That which terminates the life of people prematurely. You are separated from it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you. Let the favor and the grace upon this house go with you. Any door that has opened for this house, may it open for you. In the name of Jesus, when God blesses us here, may he bless you wherever you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, go and do mighty things for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, congratulations, God bless you. Please, Koinonia, celebrate them. Go and do great things for the kingdom and let us hear of the exploits you are doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every Chain, to break every chain, sing it one more time. Yeah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Every chain, break 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 every chain, Bible says that which I speak to you I declare to you in the secret place he said declare thou upon the mountain top 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 54 1 Corinthians 15 verse 54 everyone look up let's just read so when this corruptible shall have put on him corruption, and this mortal shall put up immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up 
in victory verse 55 can we read it together one to read oh death where is your sting oh grave where is thy victory tonight we are challenging the spirit of death i will share with you what the lord revealed to me we are going to pray are you getting my point now the bible says the sons of issachar they had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do it is a tragedy for a believer not to be able to read the signs of the world and see what is happening if we lack the perception the ability to align with what the spirit is doing we can cut short our lives without knowing hallelujah praise the lord oh death where is your sting no grave where is your victory tonight i'm teaching very briefly on victory over the spirit of death and then we are going to pray we have quite some prayers to do i don't we're not going to stay long but we're going to pray there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain hallelujah in one minute i'd like you to pray and say lord open my eyes tonight open my eyes Open our eyes, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the responsibilities of a true apostolic ministry is not just to change people but to be able to bring territories under the obedience of the Lordship of Christ. Are you getting my point now? A true apostolic ministry has a mandate to become a voice not just to people but to speak over territories and enforce obedience to the word of God to the ways of the spirit let me show you something Isaiah 42 this is what happens when any territory lacks a true apostolic voice and I'm not just talking about people who call apostle this apostle that no I'm talking of certain people that truly have been elected by grace when a territory lacks true apostolic voices that can be able to speak and command things to comply 42 verse 22 let's read 21 and 22 the lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake he will magnify the law and make it honorable verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled they are all of themselves snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses they are taken for a prey and none delivered them for a spoil and there is no voice that proclaims restore it says these people are captured they are taken for a prey and for as long as there is no voice that can challenge darkness and say restore those people will remain in captivity 
Tonight we have come to pray. We have come to speak and say restore. Says they are taken for a prey and there is none that is able to deliver them. They are taken for a spoil. You know what a spoil is? The proceeds of war. The seal of victory in a war. That every time you spoil a territory, you take the kings and their gold and their treasure. You take it back. You cut the head of the king and hang it and take it as a symbol of your victory. They are called spoils of war. And the Bible says when there are no apostolic voices in territories, when men are kept in prison houses, when they are taken for a prey, there is none that cries deliverance unto them. It says, and when they are taken for a spoil, there is none that says, restore. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Listen, before we talk about death, let me challenge you a, a little. Hold on. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The word of God can be trusted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you do not believe the word of God, you are absolutely disadvantaged in this system. Many of us want to trust the word of God but we keep asking ourselves what is the guarantee that this word will not fail me because we are used to men failing us we are used to systems failing us and as a result of that it becomes difficult especially in the face of all of the things that happen there's death everywhere unrest, insurgency and violence sicknesses and pestilence and all of these things but solomon said there is nothing that is new under the sun meaning it has happened before recession has happened before are you getting my point war and crime and killing and wickedness the reign of evil has happened before everything that happens now has happened before and the Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Let me just use a few minutes to help us and strengthen our assurance about the immutability of the word of God. Can we look at that just for a few minutes? You need to trust God's word. This is the sure foundation for faith. Not just faith that has to do with just talking, talking. No, 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 no authentic Bible faith that is able to produce results. Let's look at the scripture. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. We'll just rush. I'm talking about death, but as I began to prepare for this, God put it in my heart again and again that many people are beginning to have a second thought about the word of God. Especially in light of the fact that certain ills and evil seems to be prevailing unhindered hallelujah and so many people are beginning to ask themselves is the word of god really reliable can it really bail me in death can it bail me under wicked conditions i hear the chains falling first thessalonians 2 verse 13 we have to be very fast. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when we received what? The word of God which he had of us. We received it not as the word of men. 
But as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you, not that as you, that believe. We received it not, although it was taught by a man, it was taught by a minister, but we received it not just as a word of a man, we received it in truth, that this is the word of God. Hallelujah. Do you believe that the word of God is able to deliver, to save, to bless? Let's talk about this word of God for a few minutes. Psalm 33 verse 6. I wrote down a few scriptures to just encourage us. Can we really trust in the word of God? Can I stake my life on the word of God? How far can I go with the word of God? Can it stop me from dying? Can it stop me from pestilence and wickedness? By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. It says the heavens were created. They were framed out of the word of God. The Bible declares in John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. That everything we see in the universe came from God. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. It says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Right? And the word was God. He said he was with God in the beginning. Verse 2. And the same was with God in the beginning. Verse 3 now. He says and how many things? How many things? All things were made by him. That word. And without him was not anything made. That means without it, nothing can be made in your life. Without the word, all things were made by the word of God. Hebrews 11 verse 3, don't turn there. It says, through faith we understand. We were not there, but by faith we were told by the Holy Ghost. That the walls were framed by the word of God. The Bible says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which appear. In other words, these material things, the unit of them is the word of God. Not just atoms and molecules. Everything in the universe was framed by the word of God. Hebrews 1 verse 3. One of my most powerful scriptures about the word of God. The Bible says he upholds all things. Hebrews what? Am I right? Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of the person. And upholding all things by what? By the word of his power. Watch this. It's one thing to manufacture this. But it's another thing to keep it standing. The Bible says the word of God did not just bring it into existence. The word of God is the factor that keeps it moving. He upholds everything. Everything. The sun, the moon, balancing the equilibrium of nature is all balanced by the word of his power. So he upholds your life. Not by circumstances that happen, but by the word of his power. The Bible says all things. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Psalm 89 verse 34. Very powerful scripture. Psalm 89 verse 34. Is the word of God reliable? What is the guarantee behind the word of God? Everyone read. Want to read. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. This is God speaking. He said, my covenant, I will not break it. I will not alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Oh, hallelujah. Gives us confidence. Gives us confidence. Gives us confidence. My covenant will I not break. Men can do all of this, but I have, I have entered a covenant with myself. Because there is no man greater than me. So, I entered a covenant with myself. And I will not break it. I will not alter the thing that has gone forth. 
God will not break his word, brothers and sisters. You must be assured of this. It is the guarantee that helps us to trust the word. God cannot lie. Numbers 23 verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19. Powerful scripture. Very, very, very powerful scripture. Numbers 23. Everyone read. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? He said God is not a man. That means it's okay when men tell lies. It's part of their predicament. But God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should change his mind over what he has spoken concerning your life. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 16 to 18. The last scripture. I just want to encourage us tonight. Because you see, sometimes many of us really think and we can be tempted to think that believers are just faking these things. It really doesn't work. It's just that people are trying and let's see how far it goes. Hebrews 6 from verse 16. For men verily swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of strife. Next verse. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto who? Us. According to Galatians 2.29. 3.29 it says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye what? Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So he said, Willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. Next verse. That by two immutable things, which it was impossible. Do you know what impossible means? Impossible means if by mistake God calls this guy a woman, he must change to a woman because God cannot lie. It's not that he does not. Even if he speaks by mistake. That was why when Balaam, listen, listen. When the prophet was called to go and curse Israel, he said, I have been commanded to bless. I have already spoken it. I cannot take it back again. When Esau came and said, Is there no blessing left? Isaac said, It's too late. Something has left me because I was representing God. What is it about? Can you not just say, Okay, son, I bless you? What was he talking about? He said, Everything that is there, I have given it. So where is the blessing? Is it, a, is it just that he died on his son? That another person comes to say, please bless me. He says it's too late. He was not just talking of, I bless you, I bless you. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Cause he will give up on you. He said, Listen, let me tell you something about God. Every time God wants to speak, the first thing he examines is his ability, whether he can do it or not. God will never say anything he cannot do. It's only men that talk can say, I'll build you a house tomorrow in the afternoon. Come and collect the key of the house. That's a man talking. But when God speaks, that's why when the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, he was speaking as an oracle. And the one who the king leaned on said, are you kidding? Because he thought God was a man. And he said, really, you will see it. But you will never eat of it. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us. If we think God is playing pranks with us, and God is joking, have you read in this Bible that hailstones came from heaven? Have you read from this Bible that lepers, four lepers were running and they had the sound. It was a multiplied effect. Have you heard that people entered fire and it did not destroy them? Question. It's not just yes. Do you believe? Because the Bible says Jesus is the same 
yesterday, today, and forever. I'm about to teach on something very powerful, very briefly, and then we'll pray. But it's going to be a waste if you think God is playing games with you. I know that God is too serious to allow Jesus Christ die on the cross. Is that a joke? The Bible says, He that did not spare his only son, but offered him freely, shall he not with him give us what? All things, not some things. Say, I believe the word of God. See, this is the, this is the true foundation of faith that lasts. Not this emotionalism that people are doing in the body of Christ. This is the foundation of true faith. Hallelujah. I had a vision in the course of the week. And I saw the map of Africa. And all of a sudden, I saw like a serpent. And it was moving across it. And the Lord told me, I had that, this scripture. They are taken for a prey and none say it restore. Hallelujah. When God shows me things like this, it's because He wants us to act. Hallelujah. And then the Lord began to tell me how that death looms across the continent of Africa and even in the nation of Nigeria. It, uh, listen, 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 listen. There is death. There is the event of death that the Bible calls sleeping. Is that true? We just call it sleeping. That's not what I'm talking about. Because according to scripture, those who sleep, those who die in Christ, Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die. He was not talking about oppression of the spirit of death. Well, that's why I, did, I didn't write victory over death. Because I want you to understand what I'm sharing. Victory over the spirit of death. Say amen. Immediately I saw this. I said, ah... Is because of something very, very prophetic that God is doing in our nation. I've been announcing this all through different meetings and different conferences. And if this death is not stayed, there will be many casualties. But tonight, my goal is to demystify this thing called death. Because I tell you, when the Lord, in this vision that the Lord was showing me, I could feel fear. Believers have been captured by the spirit of fear. Pastors, leaders, apostles, prophets. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none see it restored. Hallelujah. Said these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent carpenters. Hallelujah. Is someone getting what I'm saying now? The spirit of death. He said, Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? The first thing I want you to know about the spirit of death is that it is a spirit. It is a demon spirit. Please, brothers and sisters, don't let anyone confuse you. Look up, please. Look up. Many of us here have lost loved ones. Some of them have actually gone resting. It was their due season. It was their time. But can I tell you something? There are many people whose exit out of this earth realm is as a result of being victims of the claws and the pangs of death. And we must, we must contend and refuse. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. When the Lord showed me this vision, I was very, very touched. And I knew that God wanted us to begin to speak and to open the body of Christ to the revelation that will sustain them in power. And now, I'm not one person who likes talking and announcing miracles and all of that. I like the things to happen and let the people just hear by themselves. But something happened very striking in the course of the week. A lady was in ICU. We hope that when she's done, she will come to testify. Hallelujah. And the lady was under some heavy gadgets and all of that. And then eventually she gave up the ghost. When she died, they were calling me, calling me and said, this lady had died. Everything was over. 
it was packed up. And then I told the lady that was talking to me, listen please. I told her, I said, put the phone in the dead lady's ears. Just make contact with her ears. And she put the phone and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I knock on the door of life and I bring back her spirit to her body. Nothing happened right away. We off the phone. Brothers and sisters, this is verified. It happened in Asokoro just a few days ago. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, from nowhere, this girl sneezed back to life and started, when she sneezed, listen, 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 that's not even the testimony. When she sneezed back to life after some hours, she started shouting my name in the hospital. And she was shouting and she asked them to, she said, why did you stop me? This was her testimony, listen. She said, when she was going to the gate, she just found herself in a place. Of course, for those of you who have read Divine Revelation books, you know. And she saw several people coming from the earth realm. And it was her time and she was going. Approaching and someone was, it's like people were going to the gates, you know. The pearly gates that the Bible talks about. And while she was there, she could hear from the earth that they are praying. It's like people were praying, different people. And then she said, the moment she was there, the next thing she had a loud shout and it was my voice. I was called, it was like a magnetic force. He was pulling her back and she was saying, no, I don't want to go back. And then the angel, she would enter the gate and the angel said, can you not hear that he's calling you? We cannot allow you to come. Listen, this is true. She's going to come here and testify. That can you not hear? And then he told her that it's not your time. Return back. And truly, when she spoke, it was the exact time that I was praying for her. Hallelujah. This girl, listen, that's not even the testimony. She, she came back to life with such a dramatic presence. She was blasting in tongues. When the nurse and the doctors came, the power of God came upon the nurse instantly. Right there. Listen, the doctor was so intimidated, he left. And the nurse was there. The, the lady who was talking with her called and said, I want to give my life to Christ. This lady was speaking utterly mysteries. Because she came back with an experience. I mean, her bed was vibrating. She was vibrating. I sent the text to a few of the leaders. This is how you know that. I, for me, it was a confirmation. The, the goal is not, okay, dead, raised, and all of that. Thank God for all of those things. But for me, it was a confirmation. And then guess what happened? The lady said, one of the doctors came and looked at her. And he said, be careful. And then when she was sleeping in the night, one of the doctors came to her in the spirit to kill her in the hospital. Are you getting my point now? And then she began to pray. And then in the morning, she came and confronted them, oh, her, and said, listen, you have not seen anything yet. The lady that put her ears, huh, that put the phone in the ear of the dead girl, was just going to get brief bridges and return. And a car from their back just smashed that girl. And I heard she died in the afternoon. Can you imagine? Are you seeing that evil is real? For standing to make sure somebody did not die. Our hospitals have now become occultic places. Nina Yesune Bazan Koma Bazan In my life, death has tried me many times. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't you think I'm just talking nonsense? From birth, the devil wanted to take my life. I didn't have the privilege of enjoying breast milk. To start with, let's even start from that one. Praise God. 
I've been diagnosed of all sorts of things and I've seen the hand of God. Are you getting my point? I have met with armed robbers on the way. Car has jammed me once. So don't think I'm just talking rubbish. Death is a spirit. Tonight, we will rest this issue of death once and for all. Rome, Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. What is this mysterious phenomenon called death that can scare any man, scares the rich, scares the poor? Accidents, infirmities, incurable diseases, acts of wickedness and terrorism, all kinds of things that just brutally exit people out of this earth. Is there a way out? Revelations. Verse 8. Verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. Verse 7. Please read. And when he had opened the fourth seal. This were the, the riders upon the four horse. Are you getting my point? I heard the voice of the first beat. And he said what? Come and see. Next verse please. And I looked and I behold and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was what? So this mysterious spirit that has been responsible for the premature exiting of people is not just a phenomenon. The Bible tells us that he's a real spirit. He sits upon a horse and he does not walk alone. Hell followed him. I told you hell is a spirit. Are you seeing it there in your Bible? <laughs> hmm. And power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth. So how does death manifest? It kills with what? Are you seeing now? Sword is the manifestation of that spirit. And he uses a what again? Hunger. It is still the same spirit. And number three, what you now call death. He named the event after himself. And then the fourth part he said, and with the beasts. You know who the beasts are in the earth? He's not just talking of wild animals. This is the terrorism and all of these things we call. He said, and with the beasts of the earth. They are all the manifestation of how this spirit operates. Are you getting my point now? Remember, Paul was saying he was confronted by beasts and wild animals. Right? He, didn't, he said, although he was not just talking of literal animals, he meant these, those who were opposing the cause of Christ. And so he said, this is how this spirit, he sits upon a horse and sends all of these things as envoys. Hunger, the sword, manifestations of beasts and everything. But the Bible says he sat upon a pale horse and his name is what? Death. You must understand that death is a spirit. Brothers and sisters, accidents, incurable diseases, all of these devilish, dangerous things. As common as they look, they are the vehicles through which the spirit operates. Please get this. I know that many of us, some of us have buried our loved ones. Some of us have been victims of all of these things. Don't worry. Just listen to the word of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please understand that nothing just happens in this realm. If you can believe this, this is your first deliverance tonight. Nothing. A car does not just jam people, brothers and sisters. At every given point in a man's life, he's been influenced by a spirit. There is nothing like neutral. Please hear me. You are either under the influence of the spirit of God or some influence of demon spirits. Is someone getting what I'm saying? 
When a man says he's an atheist, for instance, that in itself is a manifestation of the spirit of deception. Hallelujah. Everybody shout it, nothing just happens. Say it again, nothing just happens. Jesus was giving us an interesting parable. And he said, while men slept, right? While men slept, he said something happened. An enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and left. So that you lie down to sleep, fine and sound. And then by morning you wake up with a lump. Question, in how many hours did the lump just get up? What sponsored it that it grew more than the normal growth of the body? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now the Ebola virus and all those devilish things manufactured and fabricated from hell. Right? This is not the first time that devilish virus is coming to the earth. It had come during John Lake's time and John Lake stamped it to his feet and it went back and he says, let's try again. After many years, and let's see whether there are still ambassadors. I tell you the truth, there are still ambassadors. John Lake, that was the plague that was killing people. And John Lake said, what, what in the world is this? Let's go to the microscope. And he ended that issue once and for all. The earth is becoming more interesting. Are you getting my point? The earth is becoming more interesting because there is, there is an open confrontation of darkness. The Bible says kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. But it is they that know their God. They shall be strong. Not they that have heard about him. Not they that preach him. They that have paid the price to know their God. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits in the name of the Lord Jesus. So death is a spirit. Very quickly, is there a way out of the grip of this devil and this spirit? That's what tries to come to take many people's life in the night. Many people. Have you wondered, excuse me, have you wondered why people die in the night? Have you wondered why women make loose children in the night? Why not in the day? The mystery of the night. Hallelujah. And I tell you, there is a visitation of the spirit of death over the nation of Nigeria. I know it. I have seen it. It's looming across territories. Mysterious accidents. Mysterious rage and violence. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and there is no voice. We are busy trying to raise money in our churches. We are trying to buy suits. The devil has distracted us, men of God. We are trying to buy new cars. And the devil tells the demons, keep distracting them. While death keeps wiping people. And for as long as it has not touched us, this is the same spirit that manifested in the days of Esther. Esther was enjoying in the palace. She did not know that God took her to the palace so that she will be a voice that will cry restore. She was the apostolic voice in that dispensation. And the Bible says, when Mordecai, who was a watchman, sitting by the gates, he said, I will stand upon my watch. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say. There are no watchmen again in this country. We have lost the art of sensitivity. We have lost it to food. We have eaten the food of idols and the king's meat. A little sleep, the Bible says. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands and poverty comes upon you like an armed bandit. This is what has happened to the church. We have been stripped and robbed and we have been distracted because of the bounty. I believe in prosperity but not at the expense of that which the Spirit of God is doing. For as long as we are in our various churches and cathedrals and we feel we are secured 
and there are there are many men of God who do not believe in the Bible. It's just that they have a lot of security. And they don't go around anyhow. Right? But there are so many people who are dying, who have stood face to face, and they applied the messages that we preach, and it didn't work, and they died. And we keep saying, don't worry. Who is deceiving who? There's got to be something authentic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why will I not talk of faith and courage when there are all kinds of bodyguards following and all kinds of security people and your car is a bulletproof car? Who will not have faith under that circumstance? And your flight is a private one. And everything... Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. God will judge any man of God and any pastor who does not commit himself to teach believers truth, right? And to stand in the place of intercession and prayer and to shout restore. It's not only about collecting the tithe of God's people and telling them, so sit and do this. And then the moment they keep dying like chickens, the Bible says they are taken for a prey and there is no voice to say restore. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Death is a spirit. I like everybody to say, death is a spirit. Say it again, death is a spirit. If you know that death is a spirit, you will know that it's not a mysterious phenomenon that just comes. Listen, I travel all the time. I have, I have, I have in my little life, I don't know, only God will tell, only when we get to heaven, I will have the privilege of seeing the amount of poisons I have eaten in my life. One. Two. Only God knows the enchanters that speak spells every day concerning my life. You don't know? You want to be a man of God? You make impact and think the devil will fold his arms to watch. Never forget praying for one lady one time during Koinonia, um, during the counseling. And, and, and the spirit just shouted and said, Joshua, you, you. You know, just warning and all of that. Day and night, brothers and sisters, there are enchantments against the people of God. And so if you do not know where you stand, one outing you can leave and not return again. But let me tell you something. The Bible says the first Adam was made a quickening soul. But the second Adam has been made not a life-giving spirit. Not a life-possessing spirit. You have so much of that life. It is within your power to dispense it. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. How do you enforce your victory over this spirit of death? Especially in this day and age. Please write it down. There are principles. It doesn't happen by magic. Victory over the spirit of death. Number one, realize that in Christ, if you are born again and you have given your heart to Jesus Christ genuinely, the Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 1 that we are above. Everybody say, I'm above. I don't know how to make you believe it, but say, I am above. Say it again, I am above. It's a spiritual location. Ephesians 2 verse 1. So realize that you are from above. Hallelujah. It says, and you are sick, quickened, who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Verse 2. Wherein in time past, this and that and that and that, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Verse 3. Okay, let's, let's just run. Look for that part that says we have been exalted above. That's where I'm looking for. Verse what? Six. Six, please. Let's just run down. Let's save time. And he had raised who? Everybody say us. That means not just Christ alone. The Bible says in the curse we identified with him. Is that true? By the mystery of the Holy Communion. Is that true? We entered into him. And so because we partook of the sufferings of Christ, we also partake of the glory that follows. 
Are you getting my point now? And the Bible says, when he was raised up, we were raised up together with him. And he has made us to what? Sit in heavenly places. That's an exact spiritual location. Next verse. Ephesians 1. Everybody say, I've been raised up with Christ. And I'm seated with him. Far above. Say it again, far above. Far above accidents. Far above death. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, say it too. Far above accidents. Far above terrorism. Far above death. Far above wickedness. Hallelujah. Yes. I believe this with all my heart. I'm going to show you a powerful scripture when we're ready to pray. He said, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Ah, uh, is that it? Anyway, let's, let's save time. 21. Oh, yes. Far above what? Principalities. How many of them? And power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, because there are names in other worlds too that help people in this world. So he said, every name, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Say, I'm far above. Oh, hallelujah, I'm far above. Far above every devil. Far above every enchantment. Every act of witchcraft. Just pray it in one minute. I'm far above. I'm far above. I don't live by the sword. I won't die by the sword. I'm far above. Just pray in one minute and we'll sit down and continue. Man, take a parada balada. No, not a victim of accident. No, not a victim of bomb blast. By the mighty hand of God. Shake it, baba baba. Shake out fear from your life. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from out of my mouth. I'm far above. Far above. In the name of Jesus. Far above thrones. Far above covens. Far above witchcraft. The Bible says it. I believe it. Jesus is Lord of my life. This word is true in my life. I'm far above. I don't doubt it. I'm far above. I'm far above. Hallelujah. So that's the first revelation you must have. If you must conquer this spirit of death. I'm far above. Oh, hallelujah. Let them cast their spells. Far above. Far above. Make all the enchantments. I will go out and come back safe. I'm far above. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am far above. Man, take a labor go to paradise. Far above. Death is a rider upon a horse. But I am far above. Hallelujah. Number two. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 9. Then we move to 14 and 15. Let me show you something powerful. Brothers and sisters, when a thing is a mystery in your life, it can confuse you. But when you unlock the mysteries, there is no confusion there again. Poverty was once as dangerous as death until men found out that there is an exact formula. And today they teach it with audacity. Is because many people have not studied the concept of death and life and they have not been able to prove to the body of Christ the same way men fear death that's how they fear demons is that true that's how they fear poverty until certain people say let's enter this thing and find out and they entered and came out they said there's nothing there
But we see Jesus. Hebrews 2 verse 9. Who was made a little lower than the angels of the... For what? The suffering of death. This is Jesus paying the price. Crowned with glory and honor. That he by the grace of God should do what? Should do what? Read your Bible. Should do what? Test death for who? Every man. The, this is your Bible. This is, that's why I started by saying, do you believe it? That means, once and for all, Jesus offered himself that the spirit of death will afflict him. Once for every man. It's not talking about sleeping. No. Jesus died a brutal death. That was the spirit of death. But he allowed it once so that no man would be buffeted by this nonsense again. The Bible says it. He tasted it. He tasted it. He tasted the sting of death. Are you getting my point? That was why when he was about to resurrect, those gates of death in, in Psalm 24 said, Who is this king of glory? That wants to come back. No. When we close the door. You cannot come back again. Except somebody in this realm calls you. Who wants to call himself back. He tasted death. He tasted death. He tasted death. I believe this with all my heart. See. It is the truth you know. That will make you free. Not the truth you have heard about. It is not the light that rises that makes you arise. It is the one that comes to you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. It has always been there, but it will never work until it comes to you. He said, and the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. Hmm. Let's look at verse 14. Ah! I love the word of God. Everybody read. For as much as as ye are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had what? The power of death, that is the devil. Through death he passed through it, so that he will destroy the power, the devil and his power. Remember in Revelation, he said power was given to that spirit. Verse 15. Everyone read. And deliver them who through the word. Stop. Not through who through death. Through the fear. There is a terror. There is a spirit. That's why every time wickedness is happening, the spirit of fear always precedes it. To make people afraid. When a habal is saying three days, you will not leave. He's releasing the spirit of fear. The fear of death. Where all their lifetime subject to what? This is what is going on. You can't go out in the morning because you are afraid. What if this car has an accident? What if the plane crashes? What if the luxurious just what if, what if, what if? Hi! Let me tell you. Brothers and sisters, do you believe what I'm sharing with you? You take this word as true and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The fear of death brings bondage. Some of you are supposed to have traveled. You can't travel because you are wondering the car Number three, realize that death has been defeated. Revelations 1 verse 18. Revelations 1 verse 18. Please, let's rush. Revelations 1 verse, 7, verse 18. Please just write it and then we'll read it quickly. One to read. This is Jesus speaking. I am he that liveth and was what? Dead. And behold, I am alive forever. Amen. And I have the keys. 
Is that in your Bible? I have the keys. In other words, it is within my power to control its operation. I have the keys. Please realize this. I'm building up a revelation. So we see that he tasted death and he has the keys. We're going to find out where that key is today. Because he was talking to the churches. Talking to John and then to the churches. He said, I have the keys. First Corinthians 15 verse 55. The scripture we saw. How can a spirit terrorize nations? Terrorize people? Oh death! Where is your sting? It likens the way death takes people to the sting of a scorpion. So he said, I have given you authority over snakes and scorpions. Scorpions that sting. He said, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, you have been boasting that any man you take must enter. Where is now your victory? There are people who have defied the power of the grave. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Number four. How do you enforce your victory? You must apply the blood of Jesus by faith. Now I'm teaching you how to make it work in your life. Exodus chapter 12, please. Verse 7 and then 12 to 14. Please, let's hurry up. Exodus chapter 12. Moses showed us this revelation. Everyone look up. Now, hold on. Can you see that this is not the first time the spirit of death is passing over regions? Is that true? It has happened many times. And you can exempt yourself and your loved ones first. And then stand to speak over others. You cannot give what you do not have. Is that true? And they shall take off the blood and strike it on the two sides of the posts. And on the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat it. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute vengeance. I am the Lord. 13. And the blood shall be unto you. What? A token. A sign. A symbol. A, an indication. For when I see the blood. I will pass over you. And what? The plague. The plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. What's the name of that virus again? Huh? Ebola virus. And the plague, the Bible calls it a plague. It said, it shall not be upon you because it comes to destroy. It shall not be upon you. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, I have prayed for too many people to contact communicable disease if I was faking what I'm telling you. Are you getting my point? It's easy to pray for people in a distance. But when you lay hands on people and you are breathing on people, I do this everywhere I go. I would have caught all kinds of things by now. The last time I went for a medical checkup, the doctor was surprised. See, the Bible says, we, it says we are not, how did he put it? We have not brought to you cunningly devised fables. If you don't believe this thing, it will show in your life one day. And it will become obvious that truly you do not know. Hallelujah. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep the feast. What feast? You shall keep this mystery of the application of the blood. It's not an Old Testament concept. To the Lord throughout your generation. He said, you shall keep the feast in an ordinance. When? Are you seeing it now? It didn't say it will expire. 
the mystery of the operation of the blood to bring deliverance and to secure you is a mystery that had been there even before Jesus died. And the Bible says it is an ordinance that you will keep if you are interested in living. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? So you must plead the blood. And there are three ways to plead the blood. Number one, in prayers. When you pray, you plead that blood as the price. The blood not only saves, it delivers, it protects. You plead the blood in prayers. Hallelujah. Number two, by the mystery of the communion. The mystery of the communion. The cup, the body, and the cup. He says, for this cause, many of you take it unworthily, and some of you are sick, some of you are weak, and some of you do sleep. Number three, the mystery of the blood of sprinkling. Hallelujah. He said, you shall sprinkle it upon your walls and upon every of these things. Three scriptural ways of engaging the power of the blood to bring us victory. Let's hurry up. The last way or the last way of enforcing your victory is through the authority and power that is conferred in the name of Jesus. I like this one. Goodness. One of my best scriptures, Luke 10, 19, please. I'm about to jump up right now. Hmm. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain to break every chain behold see conceive it as a reality that I have given you I give you the word there is not power like dunamis is the word exousia I give you authority the authority that comes with my office, I give it to you. To tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over how many? All the powers of the enemy. This is the best part of the verse. And nothing shall by any means, you went to school. Brothers and sisters, what is the meaning of by any means? Whether it is by your mistake whether it's by your lack of prayer, what, by any means, if you stand in this office, I stake my reputation that when it comes to protecting you, nothing shall by any means. There are different means it can come through. Your carelessness, right? Your miss. I, I teach you a secret of spiritual immunity. You will walk through challenges that are killing others by a mystery that you will never be able to understand. He said, nothing, nothing, nothing. It is on the strength of this scripture. The Bible says, surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they shall scatter. He said, they will come to you in one way and scatter in seven ways. Behold, I give you authority. Exousia. While I was in the earth, there was authority that was given to me. And by reason of that authority, forces bowed. They didn't bow because my name was called Jesus. They bowed because of this authority. Are you getting my point now? And the Bible says, Philippians chapter 2, from verse 10, it says, Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name. What is in a name? It's an office. Jesus is not just the name of a person. The word Lord, see, listen. He said, God gave him a name. The name is not Jesus. I hope you know. I hope you know. No, the name is not Jesus. We call Jesus because 
it was the name of the person that stood in that office. Let's read on verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and of things in heaven and in earth and things under the earth. Next verse, please. And that every tongue should confess that that Jesus has entered this office called Lord. That's the name. That's the name. Lord, Master, Absolute Controller. And the Bible says whoever. That's why the Bible said the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world's and they. It was the revelation. It was the coronation service that the psalmist saw. So he said the Lord said to my Lord. Sit down at the right hand until I make your enemies. He never mentioned Jesus there. He said the Lord. The absolute control of the universe now said to my lord who got it by conquest sit down and the bible says whoever enters this office some things will start becoming possible are you getting my point in mark chapter 16 it said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name in this office higher it said blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord Whoever carries this office becomes a controller, becomes a mysterious commander. Listen, if I cannot make it for Koinonia or I, there is a program and they keep a seat here, right? And they say this seat is for... Um, Maybe the president or the pastor somewhere, right? And I call Yinka and I say, Yinka, I cannot make it, but I send you with my name. Are you seeing that? What they are interested in is not the personality. It is the office. The moment he comes, listen, if Yinka donates five million, whether I like it or not, everybody say, whoever occupies this office, that's why SSG, the secretary to the federal government will go and represent good luck. And they will say, and the president said, every presidential car you see presidency. It doesn't mean also rock. That means the collection of the people that are in this office. I hear the chains falling. You will only confront death when you stand in this office and say, oh death, where is your sting? Oh great, that vicious devil that will make a driver lose control and maim and destroy people. Where is your sting? Listen, the patriarchs of old were men of war. They fought war from birth till they died, yet they were not afraid of the sword. It's not like our own that periodically it comes. They were born and bred in war. David was a man of war. I hear the chains falling. I come in that name. He sent me as an ambassador. Oh, I believe it. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. An ambassador is one who has been sent. 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 Dear lost born. Saw so many miracles in his crusade. And when he stands on the crusade ground, he says, do you believe in Jesus? And they say, yes. He says, he sent me. He sent me to this crusade to tell you your sins are forgiven. He sent me to declare, I'm speaking to you, that in that office your sins are forgiven. Now, then, we are what? ambassadors envoys representatives with the full backing of heaven the full backing the bible says as my father has sent me the same way he equipped me the same way he was there for me that i could call on a legion of angels brothers and sisters this is not about being a man of god 
this is your positional advantage. This is really the revelation of what we call new creation realities. Hallelujah. So you realize death is a spirit. It's not omnipresent. It operates through a network of wicked devils. But it's a spirit. And the revelation that you know translates into light. And when that death sees you because light cannot, darkness cannot stand light. So they shall take up deadly things and it shall not hurt them. They shall pass an environment that has Ebola virus. And rather than destroying them, it will be a blessing for those who are infected because you come in the power. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the Bible says before the, the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will appear again. You know who Elijah was? Elijah is the spirit of the prophetic. It's a true apostolic spirit that will challenge anything that is not God. Hallelujah. It's important what you believe. It's important what you believe. Say, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. You must kill fear from your life. Brothers and sisters, people do not just die. And you know, hold on. If it's just death that many people are afraid of, do you know there is a state that you'll be alive and you'll beg for death? Because of the, the, the way the devil can bastardize your body. The Bible says he kept his bones so that none of them are broken. Have you read that in your Bible? That's what we call shalom. It's a covenant of peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Hallelujah. And he said, peace I give you. He was not talking of quietness. He means I give you an ability to be undisturbed. My peace I give unto you. Not, that the, not as the world gives. So you can stand up tall. And people are asking you, what is the basis? You are just talking nonsense. Listen, I was in the city of Jos. Five days to 9-11. On the 7th, 7th of September, 2001, I think. That was when the first disastrous strike of the enemy. I was in the town. I was in the middle of all of these things. Are you getting my point? In my little life, I have seen a lot of things. When the plane crash that was going to happen some years ago, I think last year or two years ago, I was on my way to worry. I could feel that spirit of death. See, it's not that it chooses a particular plane. They are blood testy spirits that just keep hoping something will work. Well, because we had problem landing and then we landed and we went to worry. I knew something was wrong. On my way back, I, I flew to Kano. While we were in the air, that was when the, the, the plane crash was happening. So many people were calling me and because my phone was switched, they thought that, ah, something happened. Ha! Ah, Paul will go to a city, they will kill him. As soon as they leave, he will get up. <laughs> Mystery man. Yeah, it's in your Bible. Paul died many times. He would just lie down. And once they move, you just get up. Don't get excited for nothing. Do you believe it? I remember a time when I saw in a vision, I saw my mother's coffin. I knew it was over. I saw people there crying. I saw it. And I got up. Ah, my family. There is a lady here, I'm sure she may be part of the people here. She used to be, when she was an unbeliever, she, used, she had one serious sickness, infirmity, and she was in the hospital. She told me that every time it was around maybe three to four, she would see the spirit of death. It would enter the world. You know how doctors walk around. She didn't know it was death, but this particular man will just enter and walk around to several beds. In the morning you hear crying. Oh death, where is your sting? 
I have met the spirit of death once. Face to face in my life. Let me tell you that story briefly and let me pray. I was in secondary school. And the way we arrange our beds, I was close to the door. Listen, I'm being very sincere with you. I didn't know it was the spirit of death. While I was sleeping, very cold, I saw, you know how these films where they have these people that put on hood, like knights, all these kinds of people, that's how it came. I woke up, I was not in a vision, brothers and sisters, the same way I'm looking at you like this. He was walking around the hostel, as though looking for someone. And then while it, everybody was deep asleep, which was mysterious, there was no light. And then while it was about to go out, I was looking at it, it was looking at me. When it was about to turn, I looked at it. Very dark, with just bulgy eyes. You cannot see it. Some of you who have watched that film, Lord of the Rings, you know how those, those guys are, those kings? That's how it is. How do you think those people wrote these things? I saw it. We never had a conversation. But today, I know I will meet it many times in many miracle services and in my travels across and I've made up my mind I will stamp it every day of my life you must make that determination because death is real are you hearing what I'm saying the sting of death is real if you joke with what I'm telling you you will be alive in the morning 10 minutes later you are out Take men of courage and audacity. Who is God speaking to tonight? Fear not, brothers and sisters. Not the arrows of terrorism. There is a prophetic destiny in this nation. And the soul of this nation is already with God. Beyond the reach of anything. I shared this thing when I was teaching in, in PFN Crusade in Abuja. That's the reason why Nigeria has the letter Y on the rivers. It's an imprint of the signature of the word Yahweh. That God is in charge. Listen. Upon this nation. Yes. It's not, it has nothing to do with Lord Lugard. That was a writing. Isaiah 18. A land whose rivers divide. God wrote his name there. Listen. You know why he used the waters? Go and read your Bible. Water has always symbolized abundance. And it has always symbolized the echo of God's voice. The voice of God upon the waters is mighty. Hallelujah. So many things will happen in this nation. Let me tell you. You see the thing happening? The Bible says, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The church needs to pray. And we need to realize that our prayers can withhold evil. Let's not just sit down powerless and hope that nothing will happen. Are you getting my point? And then number two, walk the principles of the kingdom. And brothers and sisters, you can walk fine, you can walk alive, you can move on strong. Refuse to die. It's a choice. Choose life. He said, I set before you. Is that true? Blessing and cursing. I didn't say the other three parts because obedience to parents, you already know that, right? And then your assignment. These are the three other factors that govern longevity. Your choice, choosing life. Obey your father and your mother that your days will be long and it will be well with you. And then finally, I shall not die but live to declare. Are you ready to pray now? Rise up on your feet. Let's do some prayer even if it's just for five minutes. Hallelujah. Please spare yourself 3-3. Three, three. We are going to pray. Before we pray for you, we are going to intercede for this country. 3-3. Three, three. Come on now. Let's pray. I call for that priest in you. Because we are about to pray. Spare yourselves and let's pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shekete Papa. Pray for Zaria. Pray for Kaduna State. That's your Jerusalem. We stay the power of evil and death and terrorism. 
we command as ambassadors shekete pokotopa we challenge thrones we challenge yokes we challenge spells every manifestation of the spirit of death of the sword of the wickedness of men we command those spirits rekete kotopokotopa rente leke brosha embrekete tekete papa papa we cause the powers in the heaven we cause the powers we cause the activities of necromancers the activities of sorcerers the activities of wizards make a poroto papaya he makes the diviners mad a pretekete lepa he causes the wisdom of the wise to go backward we pray in the name of Jesus we challenge death over Daria over Kaduna over the north over Nigeria we rebuke you we are the apostolic voices that cry restore 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 you will not take the souls of men we forbid you by the hand of God we forbid you in the name of the Lord Jesus we forbid you we forbid you we forbid you we pray for the peace of Daria we pray for the peace of Kaduna state we pray for the peace of the north we pray for the peace of our dear nation God's own nation with the signature of his majesty upon the borders of our nation Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I want you to rebuke the spirit of death. You now know it's a spirit. Cast it away from our environment. Cast it away from your family. It will not come upon the head of any of your loved ones. Go ahead and speak. I cause death over this territory, over my family. My loved ones are covered. There is a shield. There is a shield. That rider upon a pale horse will never find entrance. Not by accident. Not by sickness. Not by pestilence. Not by plague. I break the power of death. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. I'd like you to plead the blood of Jesus across the territories like the lintel of the houses and upon your life and your family. Go ahead and plead the blood. We invoke the power of the blood. We invoke the mystery of the blood. The mystery of the blood. The mystery of the blood. Shake it, 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 shake it
Pray Koinonia over Saria. We invoke the mystery of the blood over Kaduna State. We invoke the mystery of the blood over Nigeria. We invoke the mystery of the blood over our families. We command the blood, the power of the blood. We are sealed with the blood unto protection, unto perseverance, unto preservation, unto health, unto wellness. Pray. He said, My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone forth from my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. It says, I give you power. I give you authority. Hallelujah. I give you authority. Exousia. I bring you into an office. And I give you the backing of that office. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And in the name of Jesus, you are going to release life everywhere. Everywhere. In your life, go ahead. Stretch your hands across the north, the south, the east, the west. Go ahead and begin to prophesy life. Go ahead. We speak life. We speak life. Life. We prophesy life to the borders of this city. We prophesy life. Life. We come in the authority of the Lord Jesus. Life. Life. In all the 36 states of the Federation, we speak life. 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 We prophesy it. We release the spirit of life. We prophesy life. We speak life. 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 In the name of Jesus. We are life giving spirit. We command life. 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 Health. Vitality. Life. Life. Hallelujah. Look up, we're rounding up. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now let me explain to you what you just did. Verse 2. For the law that activates the spirit of life can do something. It can set men free. There is a principle that activates the operation. Are you seeing it now? When it comes to conquering sin and death, there is a spiritual law. It says it's called the law of the spirit of life that is resident in Christ Jesus. For the law. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. You are going to invoke the operation of this law in your life. And say in my life. Right now. The law of life. The spirit of life. Begins to work. Every dead organ. Hear the word of the Lord. Every infirmity. The spirit of life. 
the spirit of life the spirit of life holy spirit manifest as the spirit of life in my body no cancer no hiv no ebola virus no infirmity the spirit of life activated is a law it needs to be activated the law of the spirit of life the law of the spirit of life that is resident in Christ Jesus immunes me sets me free from the oppression that brings sin and death shake it take it take it take it rekoto pokotos i choose life i choose life in my body i choose life Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 91. Psalm 91. From verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be your shield and buckler next verse thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that flyeth by day next verse nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, not the destruction that wasted in noonday. Next verse. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right side, but none shall come near, near you. Say it shall not come near me. Say it, it shall not come near me. Now in the next one minute, with every strength you have, you know all the weapons that this spirit uses accident whatever come against them you are far from my dwelling no accident not to my life not to my family not to god's people i cause that spirit pray No death, no accident, not by the sword, not by the arrows of wicked men, not by gunshots of robbers. And wicked men, there is a spiritual immunity at work in my life, at work in my family. Hallelujah. 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 Let's look at two scriptures. Matthew 16, 28. Oh, very quickly, we're almost rounding up. But this is very important. For many of us, I tell you the truth. This will give you confidence. Are you ready to read? Want to read?
Verily I say unto you, there are some people who are standing here. By whatever spiritual immunity, they will defy the laws of death. And they will be standing tall until they see the Son of Man. John 8, verse 51. We're rounding up. Please believe these things. This is what makes men confident in this kingdom. You must be standing upon something. One to read. I am prophecy in motion. Prophecy in motion. Ela baba ba shata la baka prata kata bala da bakaya. Rakata prekete le mokosi ya bala da da ba. Now we do not yet appear what we shall be like. It do not yet appear. The curriculum is still in progress. But when the master is done with your life, when you are tried as gold, you will be an object of praise and envy for the nations. Lord, I will pass through the training. I will be built. Sheka paria kata ba 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 ba. Rata prekete la pata ba kasa na mokosia. Make sure you are you are praying. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter twelve from verse one. The Bible says, "Seen then." That we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. It says, let us lay aside every weight. Your weight can be your looks. Your weight can be your designer suit. Your weight can be your ego. And the pride and the arrogance that mediocrity has given you. Let the Lord smash it and bring you to a higher standard. Hallelujah. Listen. This has been our cry in this place. He is the pot and we are the clay. Whenever you come here, you say, Lord, stretch me. Open me up and change me. Don't just come here tonight to say, wow, let's see what happens. Especially if this is your first time. Participate and let your heart be open. The Bible says, he is the rewarder of them that diligently diligently that seek him without distractions your will be done hallelujah hallelujah let me tell you something the reason why success is valuable is because not everybody will ever get it. Are you listening to me? Greatness lies in the hands of those who have endured what others cannot endure. While you are praying, some people are in the beer parlor. Let me tell you something. We know about the mercy of God, but I want to tell you God is also just. Hallelujah. It is the justice of God that takes sinners to hell. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. That means if you don't reap what you are sowing, God is being mocked. Are you listening to me? God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that man will receive it. He said, He that soweth to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. You can choose today to pay the price and sow seeds that will, the Bible says, and Abraham was all Genesis 24. 
and stricken in age and God had blessed him in all things. Our parents left curses for us. Many of us are victims of the carelessness of the generations that have gone ahead of us. But you must take responsibility about your life. Otherwise, things will not change. This is why God brought you here tonight. As an indication of your desire to partner with the Holy Spirit in transforming your destiny. And let me tell you something. The kingdom of God operates in a reward system. You will not seek God and later run back and seek other things. As you seek him, they will follow you. God will be unjust if you have to seek him first and then run back to catch up in bringing other things. Uh -uh. As you seek him, those things that men follow will come to you. So open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you understand that the Lord is here. This is what God is asking you to do tonight. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Then you understand that the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Bless you. Greet one another. Tell them lectures continue. Hallelujah. Bless you. Be seated. If you don't have a seat, stand. Or sit on the floor. Hallelujah. When it was time for the people to eat bread, Jesus said, tell them to sit down. If you can't sit down, you won't eat that bread. That bread is not just for people. You must sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What wisdom is this? Tonight I'm going to be sharing with us on a dimension of wisdom that I believe will fire somebody's spirit. We've been considering the subject of success. Let me tell you something. It's my desire that the least person among us will be like David hallelujah you know as I look at everyone here I'm just imagining I'm just imagining if God will open your eyes to see how your five years will be like how your ten years some of you are escaping some things forever Satan notwithstanding Look, it plays to listen to the Lord. Are you hearing me? He said, Martha, you are distracted and offended by many things. But he said one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing, one thing is needful. That you sit down at the master's feet. He said, this Mary has desired and this she has found. There is a master key in life. When you find it, you have found it. Hallelujah. What wisdom is this? I want to reveal to us, building from last week's message. Please, if you've not listened to last week's message, get it. Get it is very important. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. We've been receiving testimonies. A very thought-provoking message that opens you up to the spiritual dimension of success that lets you know that nothing just happens in this earth realm there are those who are called the elites in this earth realm those who know there are those who are the victims of the consequences and the decisions of the elite hallelujah and tonight i trust that the word of god will provoke you make sure you write Please, if you are here without a writing material, beg your neighbor.
And he told John, he said, write. Although he was in heaven, he said, write it. For these words are faithful and true. Write it. Hmm. A dimension of success that is bigger than science. Bigger than philosophy. Bigger than common sense. I want to show you a, a not a mystery. But I trust the Lord to equip us tonight with a higher dimension of the operation of the spirit. See, I want you to be so full of knowledge and truth that your life, it will be programmed automatically to be successful. You can't undo it again, even if you want to do it. Hallelujah. In chemistry, there are some reactions that are called irreversible reactions. Once they happen, they have happened. This is what is happening to your life. There is an irreversible spiritual reaction. Hallelujah. You will become something. And then when you become it, those who are running helter skelter will say, but this is what we've always wanted to become. And God will say, go and join the queue. Bishop talked of a 75 year old man who was in primary four. There are some classes in life you don't jump. Hallelujah. God designed it such that when you finish every class, a batch is given to you. So you can know who cheated. You can do expo in the university, but not in life. At the end of it, life will count your level and count the badge and say, oh God, you jump this, 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 go back. Many people will go back. The Bible says, it's the thief that follows through the window. Is that in your Bible? Hustling can help you jump through the window. Is that true? But life will bring you back. I tell you. May it not happen when you have children. Because they will go back too with you. And as you are moving, they will be saying, Daddy, why? Lamentations 3.27 It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. It is good that a man bear his yoke. The Bible says the glory of the young man is his strength. Now that you are young, you can pray. Now that you are young, you can press. Said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk again. He said, in the days of Samuel, when the word of the Lord was cast. May you be the light when darkness comes upon men. And that light will make kings to come to your rising. Gentiles and kings to the brightness of your rising. Like Sheba, they will come with their goods to reward your sacrifices of today. And Sheba heard of the wisdom of Solomon. It was so notable. She had to sail by sea and come to test him. The entire kings of the earth came together. Solomon is the biblical portrait of wisdom. I pray that this dimension of wisdom will fall upon somebody this night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's write a few things. What does it mean to be successful in the kingdom? It's important that we understand the biblical concept of success. I want to define success by God's standards because there are many standards that have been presented to many people including believers. And many of us have received wrong perspectives of what we call success. But we trust God for grace to reorder a lot of things. Say after me, I received this dimension of wisdom. Say one more time, I received this dimension of wisdom. Grant us this wisdom, O God. Grant us this wisdom. 
I'll give you two definitions. The definition of success in the kingdom. Number one, it means to grow in the knowledge of God and in conformity to his nature and principles. The first parameter to gauge and define success in the kingdom is not a car, not a house, not jeep. Wrong parameters. In Jeremiah 9.23 he says that let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. Hallelujah. He said, but let him that glory and glory in this, that he knoweth and understandeth me. The knowledge of God, to the degree to which you know God, and you have allowed your life to conform to his nature and his principles, you are considered to be successful from the perspective of the kingdom. So number one, growing in the knowledge of God. The Bible says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Paul was speaking to the church. He said, my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Until the nature, the character, the formation of Christ. So that you become a visible manifestation just like Jesus. The Bible says, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In other words, he was the physical expression of whatever you think God is. Hallelujah. Number two, it means to experience the blessings of God in every area of life. It's not enough to know God. It means to experience. Look at me. The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation, not the explanation of the sons of God. There are many people who can explain success, but there are very few people who will ever experience it in this life. The world is not waiting for explanations. They are waiting for the manifestation. Hallelujah. So success in the kingdom means to experience the blessings of God. In how many areas? Success is not just about money and finance. No. Your health. Your family. Your relationships. It means to experience the blessing of God. Everybody say the blessing of God. In your career, in ministry, in whatever area of your life. That your life will be an example A portrait there are certain people in scripture that represented the portrait of certain things the biblical portrait of a blessed man is Abraham the biblical portrait of wisdom is Solomon the biblical portrait of the prophetic is Elijah the biblical portrait of the law is Moses hallelujah the biblical portrait of love is John the biblical portrait of faith is Peter. And so on and so forth. May you be a portrait that represents something to the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. Kingdom definition of success. We're talking about wisdom. So I want to get it straight with us so that we know what we are not talking about tonight. Number three. It means to accomplish your life goals and your God-given assignment. Success in the kingdom means you accomplish your life goals. You accomplish your God-given assignment. He said, my meat, in other words, this is what gives me satisfaction. To do and to finish the will of him that has sent me. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Jeremiah chapter 1 he said before I formed you I knew you I called you I ordained you to be a prophet it means to accomplish your goals in life to do and finish your God given assignment one more number four
It means to be a blessing to mankind. Success according to the kingdom definition means to be a blessing to mankind. Both believers and unbelievers. The Bible says he gives rain both to the godly and ungodly. When your life becomes a reference point both to believers and unbelievers you are successful. He said let your light so shine before men, not Christians, before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven the bible says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus that we may do that which we have been for ordained for hallelujah are you blessed write this word down exploits this is our year of supernatural exploits by the grace of god exploits it means unusual uncommon extraordinary accomplishment unusual uncommon extraordinary accomplishment Hallelujah. Let me give you the definition of wisdom. You're ready? Number one, this is the general definition of wisdom as we know. That wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge this is the general definition of wisdom wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied or information is applied accurately we call that wisdom are you there accurate application of knowledge but you see the wisdom i'm talking about tonight is not just the one that fits this definition it's a higher realm mark six mark six let's examine this kind this type and this dimension Mark 6. Say after me, I received this wisdom. Are you there? Mark 6 verse 1. Let's hurry up. And he went out from there and came into his own country. And his disciples followed him. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. He said, and many hearing him were what? astonished saying from where had this man these things he said and what wisdom is this which is given unto him and through that wisdom what happens he said that even such mighty works i'm talking about the kind of wisdom that will grant you access to command exploits beyond the realm of this earth this is not the kind of wisdom you find around the bible says jesus walked in that level of wisdom and when he began to talk they asked him they said from where where is this man coming from and what wisdom is this everybody say what wisdom is this So let's define the dimension of wisdom we are talking about. This wisdom is the supernatural ability 
the supernatural ability to use the inspired and the written word of God to solve life's problems and make accurate decisions. The supernatural ability to use the word of God both written and inspired to solve the problems of life and to make accurate decisions. This is the dimension of wisdom that the ancients used in the Bible and they commanded exploits. The ability to use the word of God and all the inspirations that come from the Holy Spirit to give it applicable value here in the earth realm and command results with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's examine a few kinds of wisdom that we have. James 3. I want to take this carefully tonight because I want everybody to understand this. I want us to get it. The Bible took time to talk about this dimension of wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom even cries. Wondering why people are not interested in her pursuit. And it says wisdom is the principal thing. Let's look at James 3. We read from verse 13 to 17. But the verse of emphasis is verse 15. From verse 13. It says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good life his works with meekness and wisdom. Verse 14. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your heart, that means there are some levels of wisdom that only produce this. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. Are you ready? It says, This wisdom descended not from above. So we see the first kind of wisdom. This is the one we are talking about. The wisdom that comes from above. Hallelujah. The apostle is contracting, is, is contrasting a wisdom that comes from above with other kinds of wisdom. Number one, the wisdom that comes from above. This one is given by God alone. You don't read for it. You can't search it out. Let's continue. Number two, he said, but it's earthly. So we have earthly wisdom, human wisdom, what we call common sense. The ability to know that if you touch fire, it will burn you. The ability to know that you cannot sit down on water ordinarily. Earthly wisdom, Sophia. Hallelujah. Number three, sensual wisdom. This is the wisdom that you get through study, scientific wisdom, philosophical wisdom. Hmm. Wisdom that comes through studies. Hallelujah. That's the kind of wisdom that makes all of the things that we have that help us relate with our environment. And then the fourth kind of wisdom. The Bible calls it devilish or demonical wisdom. This is the wisdom that is gotten from the underworld. This is the wisdom that you get by your alliance and your allegiance with Satan. This is the wisdom that was used to build Egypt a type of Babylon it was the wisdom that Pharaoh and the Egyptians used and they accomplished supernatural extraordinary things but hear what the Bible says verse 17 this is the wisdom we are considering tonight he said but the wisdom that is from above come on now where is it from it's not from the earth realm I will show you that you cannot find it 
it does not have a physical location in the earth realm it's first pure peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality without hypocrisy this is the wisdom we are talking about this dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten in this earth realm wisdom from above above and beyond anything that you know everybody say i receive that wisdom hallelujah there is this dimension of wisdom and there are men and women who are walking in this level of wisdom today solomon in scripture the bible says that solomon had an interaction with god and he was given this wisdom and the reign of israel during the dispensation of solomon as theologians tell us is the closest to the biblical portrait of what the millennial reign looks like there was no war hallelujah solomon became king and he brought rest and abundance to the nation of israel no war during his time there was peace and tranquility by this wisdom and tonight i pray that we will find it we will find it so that you and some of your family members will rest forever i pray for you that you will find it there are some things that when you find they become life they exempt you forever hallelujah job 28 how do we access this wisdom this supernatural ability that is not just found lying around this wisdom that defies scientific wisdom wisdom that is bigger than studies wisdom that is bigger than age age does not give this kind of wisdom this is the wisdom that when they gathered around with job many people were speaking out of different wisdom earthly wisdom sensual wisdom and ellie who said uh-uh he said i was young and you people were old so i thought to keep quiet he said i thought that experience should teach wisdom but there is a spirit in man any kind of man hallelujah solomon was a very young boy when he began to lead the nation of israel 12 years of age but he became a king with this mighty wisdom and he ruled for 40 years 12 years how old are you those who celebrated their birthdays how old are you but a 12 year old boy confused and perplexed you see why he asked god for wisdom what will you expect a 12 year old boy to ask wife husband he said oh lord i'm but a small boy and god said don't worry there is a kind of wisdom that when it comes upon you you will produce exploits for 40 years hallelujah job 28 for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way It's a long reading let me read this is job the bible calls job the richest blessed blessed man in the east he was a great man when the elders saw him they stood up the young men saw him and they bowed their face they could not look at him what dimension of wisdom brought him to that level of success read with me 28 surely there is a vein for silver that means where silver is mine has been found by men is that true and a place for gold where they refine it 
Iron is taken out of the earth and bronze is melted out of stone. He set an end to darkness and searched out all perfection. The stones of darkness and the shadows of death. Listen. Verse 6, he said the stones of it are the place of sapphires. And it had the dust of gold. It's trying to tell you what the wisdom, the philosophical wisdom of men have been able to accomplish. He said through that wisdom, they have even been able to find where gold and silver is hidden. They can come here and not need to dig down to the earth to tell you whether there is gold or silver. That's a measure of wisdom. Hallelujah. But verse 7 says, There is a part which no fowl knoweth. Birds fly in the air. They see things that men cannot see. But he said there is a part that even the eyes of the bird cannot reach. No matter what plane it stands to search it out, it cannot see it. He said, and the falcon's eye has not seen it. The lion's whelps. The lion that does not fear any animal. It is not restricted. But he said, even the lion has not been able to discern that place. He put forth his hand upon a rock and overturned the mountain by its roots. He cut out rivers among the rock and his eyes see every precious thing. He binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden bringeth forth it to light. Verse 12, are you there? Here's the question. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? This is a question. With all the excavations that happen, there are cranes today that build all kinds of towers in the earth. Man has been able to stretch and explore wisdom. There are houses that have been built inside the sea. There are bridges that they build across seas. But the Bible says, where is this very wisdom? That with all the advancement of science, men have not found it. Let's fast for the location of this wisdom. 13 he said man knoweth not its price neither is it found where in the land of the living in other words it is not in this earth realm you cannot find it here no matter how intelligent you are this is the wisdom that is above and beyond this earth realm the depth where is the depth the deep places, the places of the occult, the places where they do all kinds of things, that even the occultic realm has this to say, it is not with me. And the sea said, it is not with me. That's why even wealthy people in the earth realm have not been able to find this wisdom. And the recession that is coming will prove it, that although... The, the sea represents the abundance of people because the Bible says I will give you the abundance of the sea he said even the sea those who have walked in abundance who claim they have found the wisdom all of the people that Forbes magazine is listing the Bible says they have not found it and time will show that what they had was not wisdom there was famine in Samaria to an extent that people did not have any resource they finished eating animals they ate plants and grasses it was remaining only human beings and mother said let's start eating our children where were the philosophers and the, the intelligent people there will be a replay of that yeah the bible says it in malachi 4 that the earth will burn with an oven and all those who do wickedly will be embarrassed let me tell you the truth if you do not access this wisdom whatever else you have are just shadows are you getting blessed tonight the bible says 15 it cannot be gotten for gold that means you don't buy this wisdom with money if you could buy it with money the wicked wealthy men including the Illuminati, they will buy everything and be the custodians of it. But the Bible says this one, even gold, cannot buy it. You can't buy it. It's not the personal possession of any man.
it cannot be weighed for silver it is not valued with the gold of offering and the precious onyx and the sapphire the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it is not for the jewels of gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearl or the price of wisdom is above rubies it says the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with your gold 20 whence then cometh wisdom where is this wisdom that everything that men value today cannot buy it this is what Solomon saw and when he caught it every other thing that could not buy it followed him come on now i give you a master key the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing listen to the word of god when he speaks because they are life to those who find them many people will not listen this is the problem pastor it's not just the hearers there are some of you looking at me and you are saying is this thing really important it will be important when all else fail in your life My son, the Bible says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them. I show you a way, a way of escape out of the nonsense that many people live forever. There are people perpetually forever. There are some who have enslaved their generations forever. One of it is America. 17 trillion US dollars in debt increasing by an average of 12 billion dollars every day how many generations will pay it they are the ones we call the wise they are the ones who are trying to follow the Bible says they can't buy this wisdom are you hearing me with all the wisdom of the military and the wisdom of governments they have not been able to stop war but a 12 year old boy came with this wisdom and for 40 years there was peace in the nation where is this wisdom my god i pray that somebody will get this wisdom solomon with this wisdom made silver like the dust silver like the dust if you find silver outside you are traveling to Kano first thing tomorrow morning to go and sell it first thing but the time came people saw it and they just left it my god i received that dimension of wisdom i receive it let's finish up seeing it is hidden from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air abaddon the place of the dead and death say we have heard its fame with our ears god understandeth his way this is the secret he said with all this confusion that men are having god is saying i know where it is i know where it is because i kept it and i know the place of it where is this wisdom how can you access this wisdom with this wisdom daniel entered a strange land and he ruled through the dispensation of three different kings the same result the same result through the dispensation of three different kings hallelujah praise the lord this dimension of wisdom we're talking about accessing this wisdom now this dimension of wisdom only comes from god the first thing i want you to know about this wisdom in and in accessing it is that it is given everybody say it is given god gives men you don't study it you don't look for it it's a waste of time god gives men hallelujah when you meet his conditions he will give it to you god gives men ready let me write the conditions for you the conditions for accessing this dimension of wisdom number one you must have a passionate love for god and his agenda 
the Bible says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it come into the heart of man. What God has prepared for them that love him, not them that speak in tongues. Not them that attend koinonia. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. What God has in store for who? Them that love him. We are going to examine Solomon's life very quickly before we pray. Because he's the biblical portrait. Let me teach you something. Every time you are searching out for something in life, stop confusing yourself. Go back to the word and look for those who were biblical portraits of that thing you are looking for. The Bible says, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear thee. He said, I called him alone and I blessed him. That means as far as God is concerned, when you are talking about blessings and prosperity, Abraham is God's portrait of a blessed man. Not Bill Gates, not Warren Buffett, not Carlos Limas Hilu, not all of those great men. Thank God for them. But he said, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear thee. When it comes to wisdom, it was given to Solomon. There are many people that operated that dimension of wisdom. Daniel, different people. But we are going to examine the life of Solomon. Let's look at his life quickly. Conditions for, for, for accessing that wisdom. Number one, passionate love for God. First Kings chapter 3. I prayed my heart out and I said, Lord, let your people find wisdom. May they find wisdom. Many of you will thank God for these teachings years to come. Are you there? First Kings 3. Let's examine the life of this biblical figure that was able to access this level of wisdom. The first thing the Bible has to say about Solomon in chapter 3 verse 3 is that and Solomon loved the Lord. Everybody say Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon did what? The Bible didn't say and Solomon served the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. See, let me tell you, your love and passion for God is the number one thing he's searching for even beyond your service. There are many people who serve God, but they do not love God. They don't have that passionate love. They are only serving God because of formality or because of their environment. You are in a family where everybody is a Christian. So you have to go to church. You have to come for koinonia. He said, and Solomon did what? Love the Lord. That means every other thing that he did was because of that love. A man can serve God because of wife. I hope you know that. A man can serve God because of husband. A man can serve God because of the whiplash of employment. And you just find the nearest church and say, Ah, let me find refuge in this place. And rest before I find out what is going on. People can serve God for various reasons. For car, for house, for prosperity, for job. He said, but Solomon loved the Lord. Do you love the Lord? The first condition for accessing this wisdom. This is why the kings of the earth cannot get it. Because they do not love the Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart. When you give God your heart, not your hands, not your tears, when you give God your heart, I'm giving you a big secret. Many Nigerians do not love God. Many pastors do not love God. They love ministry. They love suits. They want ministry advancement, but they do not love the Lord. Many leaders in this country do not love the Lord. Many young people hustlers who keep hustling forever they don't love the lord many fathers many mothers do not love the lord and we wonder why his blessings and his wisdom is far from us some of you here looking at me don't love the lord you love the house of god you love the people of god 
you love Christian music, but you don't love the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. Can that be your testimony? That will say, ah, and Eben loved the Lord. And Paul Maman loved the Lord. Some of you, as you say, and you love the Lord, your spirit will tell you no way. You say, and you are now willing to love the Lord. Not that you love the Lord. I keep emphasizing this passion for God. Because if you are not rooted in love, success will make you run away from God. Are you hearing me? Success will make you do what? Let me tell you. If you enter real success, it's a double-edged sword. It can kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are levels. The, the problem is many people in Nigeria are so poor and unsuccessful, it cannot even cross their mind what true success looks like. And Solomon loved the Lord. That's the first condition. Number two, you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing. You want to access this wisdom? You must have what? A sincere desire to be a blessing. Same First Kings 3 from verse 8 and 9. God gave Solomon an open check. He said, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? Look up. If Solomon was a Nigerian and God says, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? His first question will be, is he only me? Will there be any other person with it? Say, no, only you. He say, ha, God, you better carry paper and viral. Let me empty my whole life. Let me tell you what I want. The first thing is, any day anybody speaks against me, let him die. One. Two. All the people that have called me a failure, prove a point to them. Is that not true? Number three make those people serve me so that forever it will remind them let me tell you hear me if that is your desire i assure you it is not god's wisdom you will ever get in life you can get any other thing but you can't get god's wisdom that way the bible says indeed genesis 12 verse 2 shall all the families of the earth be blessed there are many people who, who, who jump in church. Oh, I'm a millionaire. I tell them, you can get it by, by working for 50 years. But I assure you, if it is through the wisdom of God, your heart must be ready to be a blessing. Otherwise, you cannot access this wisdom. Do you know how many self-centered, selfish people we have in this world? Some of you are saying, me, I'm not selfish. How much have you held that you know whether you are selfish or not? Solomon had the opportunity to say, Lord, me and my wife and all the people, bless me. Hear what he said, verse 8. He said, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people. People, people. When you love God truly, you will love people. Many pastors preach day and night to congregations they don't love. They are just trying to use the congregations to show they are making progress in ministry. I told God, if you never bless me in this life, if I never become successful in this life, I may do many things, but not loving you is not one of them. He has my heart. Believe me. I've crossed a bridge and burnt it that I'll never return again. When you see God blessing certain people, check their heart. I had Bishop Oyedeko shout this thing. He said, you want to know the secret of my blessing and the blessing of this ministry. Check my heart beat for God. There are many of you, if God says, between 12 this night and 1, anything you pray anything you ask me i will give you i mean jesus appears to you the first thing is you wipe sleep from your eyes and stand and mention the name of all your loved ones and mention everything till five minutes to one you will sit down and say lord i'm still thinking okay i remember 
do this for me for me for me i trust god that in the years to come in koinonia our testimony will not just be god gave me tea god gave me bread god gave me handkerchief but that god used me to do this for somebody else it is at that point we will clap right now we are clapping for god change me and we thank you for it god did this a millionaire is not one who has one million a millionaire is one who has become a blessing to people with up to one million oh god i want this i want fame i want power give me this church oh god i'm tired of wearing suit that tailor sold i want to wear the one that i'm buying I'm... oh god change my story and god is saying for you or for me or for my kingdom God said, well, this, when we get to that bridge, have you heard people say that? He said, when we get there, we'll cross it. You better, God can see your heart. Everybody say, I love the Lord. And I desire to be a blessing. See, can I tell you, if you are looking for success for yourself, you don't need much effort. You know, but you know that? How many clothes can you wear? How many books can you write? But when your heart is set for the kingdom of God, then you are, you are not ready for the avalanche of exploits that you will do. There are many people who want anointing. Some people come to me, they just say, oh, man of God. These are Buddha people again. They come, oh, man of God, my ministry, we've not been experiencing the hand of God. And I, I trust God for the oil of your life. As if I'm selling it. Say, man of God, I believe if you touch me, there will be an explosion. And I'm saying, look at this guy. From the way he's talking, from the way he's talking, this guy is going to yoke and kill the sheep. There are many people who want to go on air. Oh God, take me on air. God say, you, <laughs> for, because of the way I love you, you won't cross this realm of ministry. When you see God not blessing some people, don't be too quick to beg on their behalf. Ask God why first. Some of our fathers have prayed. We have done Bible studies. We brought prophet, priest, king. We brought everybody to our houses. Change our story. Oh God said, Amen. God said, No way. You are the one shouting Amen there. Yeah. I have seen your heart. Are you ready to be a blessing? I'm telling you a secret. It does not cause God to change your family. Or your situation but can he have your heart are you ready to truly be a blessing can you sit down today and see a family come and they love god and you just look and the lord say build a build a three bedroom flat for them and don't announce it build it put everything and come and tell them this was why god blessed me you say if i do this to you here's the condition it must be on newspaper it must be on cnn all of you must come and kneel down and say thank you and i will give you the key in front of everybody that way they will now know that i'm serving the lord it doesn't work that way how many of you are ready to be blessed how many of you know that if, if you are successful today you will give scholarships you will build orphanages you will build churches let me tell you the truth many of you are lying because you've never done anything with the ten thousand you have even your tight, you have not been faithful. You just saw 1,000. Hey! 1,000. You can buy palm oil, you can buy salt. Maggi one tier. Gary, if he's the half one, said it will reach. Number three. So number one, a passion for God and his agenda. Number two, a sincere desire to be a blessing. Say, I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. Say, I refuse to be a consumer. Say it. I refuse to be a consumer. I'm not that man praying for God to bless others. Have you had that kind of nonsense, satanic, anti-God's agenda prayer? Where they say, may God bless you. Oh, as you bless, please, our pocket is open. Drop it for us. What kind of cause is that? There are people in life who are waiting. That's, that's their prayer. Oh God, bless this guy. He has already gone far. Just finish with him for my sake. Because we hate paying the price. Say, God, please. 
the way the way Tokumbo is going now lord i thank you keep blessing him i say tk i'm praying for you i'm praying for you the prayer i would have done for myself i'm doing for you don't forget me no no you must desire to be a blessing because you see how can you pay so much price just to bless others does it look fair it's not it's not the attitude of natural men when you suffer alone what happens you chop alone that's what they've taught us in Nigeria. Pastor, <laughs> they can die alone. Hallelujah. That's the language of Nigerians. I suffered alone. Were you there when I was suffering? Say no. So now it's my turn to chop. I don't know you. I don't know your name. We have never met. Say Fatima, say Fatima, me, I don't know you. I've never seen you. If your heart is not said to be a blessing. I am telling you, I'm not just talking of money. You will never really get anything. Hallelujah. A sincere desire to be a blessing. Number three, to access this wisdom, you need to operate the law of giving. First Kings 3 verse 4. That's what we see in the life of Solomon. Everybody say the law of giving. Any day I talk about the law of giving, don't be confused. Let me tell you straight to the point what I'm talking about. The law of giving is number one, your tithe. Whenever I talk of the law of giving, it's not some unambiguous thing. Number one, your tithe. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 20 to 12. Let me tell you something. I don't care any other giving you give. Even if you give one billion for any project, if your tithe does not precede your giving life, you only wasted your time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your tithe is your number one obligation in the law of giving. Please listen to me. I pray that God will make many of you see that this is not some scheme by men of God to collect money from you. Because if that is it, you, you will never be successful. This is not about money. It's about maintaining an open heavens. The Bible says, Bring ye all your tithe into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here which saith the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast its young. And he says, you will be a delight some land and you will be blessed. Seven prophetic blessings that follow a tithe. Many people think tithe is all about money. Tithe is about giving God first place in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, how much? It's just 5,000. Even God understands. Oh, my father gave his tithe for me. All these flimsy excuses will keep you a failure in life. Say, I receive grace to tithe. Be consistent. I have envelopes, envelopes in my house. Anything that comes in, I've told you this is the secret of the blessings of ENI. It's not a mystery. The finance department are on perpetual instruction. I don't care money for what is raised in this place. Before we touch one naira, or one dollar or one pound one whatever it is the tithe is taken first when we started the school of ministry the same thing the tithe as i speak to you right now the tithe for the collection of this night is already set there were many trees in the garden of eden but god kept the tithe and told man don't touch it every time you take what god did not give you he will return back or something he will collect some Something that he had given you. Say amen. Every time, some of you, you take the tithe. What happens? It will drive you out of the garden. Hallelujah. Could this be the reason why some of you may never go far in life? You take 10,000. You say, Lord, in my heart I've given you. But right now, let me just use this quickly. Let me just buy Panadol. I promise you. There's 120,000 coming on Wednesday. When it comes, I will add it. These are gimmicks by Satan to kill you. Some of you, 
you you in your mind you even have it in a pen your tithe from march to now that you plan to give god but you have not yet given he said god you look at the heart number two your kingdom investments i'm talking of your offerings i'm talking of your seeds that are sown in the house of god if you have a business tight you have a church tight you have anything tight tight and you an open heavens so your kingdom investments and then giving to god servants prophet offerings and giving to the needy these are the things that constitute the law of giving the bible says in first kings 3 verse 4 it says solomon offered a thousand everyone say one thousand bond offerings say one thousand look up we are not up to one thousand in this place do you know what it means to see a field as big as football field and you just stand from somewhere and see them dragging animals 800 801 802 870 900 950 991 to 1000 and then they caught all of them you just see blood spilling around what waste what waste and god saw a man doing this while solomon got to the 900 one he said lord still for you he got to 991 he said lord for you and he killed the 1000 and god said no way god himself had to come down and say solomon you have touched me you have touched me in what do you want come on now there are some sacrifices that will compel the presence of god hallelujah in my little life i've had the opportunity to do some dangerous givings i've told you god does not love a cheerful giver alone god also loves a crying giver there is he that weepeth And bearing precious seeds there is he that weepeth there are some givings that you don't just give laughing you will give and cry you will give and call yourself a fool after the service how be it your faithfulness will endure finally under accessing this wisdom ask of the Lord first Kings 3 verse 9 Solomon acts of the Lord Solomon acts of the Lord for an understanding heart James 1 verse 5 the Bible says does any man lack wisdom let him ask of the Lord let him ask of the Lord tonight we are going to be asking I told you this wisdom see this wisdom comes to you from God it's an impartation Solomon discusses with God in the night in a dream the next day he wakes up and he starts judging with that wisdom immediately immediately Daniel Daniel, I'm going, we're going to consider that scripture quickly before we pray. Daniel, when the king had a dream, could not interpret it. He said, let's just rest. He rested that night. That wisdom worked. This is not the kind of wisdom that will happen over time. Uh -uh. When it comes on you, it speaks at once. Hallelujah. Finally, before we pray, let's consider the workings of this dimension of wisdom the operation how does it work i've told you what it is i've told you how to access it how does this wisdom work proverbs 18 verse 1 the first way is the sacrifice of meditation this is how this this is the first way this wisdom begins to find expression what did i say the sacrifice of meditation proverbs 18 verse 1 the bible says true desire a man having separated himself seek it and intermeddle it with all wisdom meditation meditation Many of us do not understand the power of meditation. When you set aside time and you sit alone and you begin to allow the Holy Spirit
to find expression and then that wisdom begins to find expression meditation Daniel chapter 2 from verse 14 to 6 please let's look at it quickly I want to show you a very sound warning and impart wisdom for some of us Daniel 2 I cried for many years to the Lord I said Lord give me wisdom give me wisdom Daniel 2 from verse 14 are you there say amen let's read it quickly verse 14 then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok the captain of the king's guard who was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon they could not interpret the king's dream look at this wicked king you had your dream and you forgot and you were angry just like many people in Nigeria they blame people for their failed dreams they wanted to be great it didn't happen and now they're angry at everybody listen Daniel said this in verse 15 and he answered and said unto Ariok the king's captain why is the decree so hasty from the king then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel 16 listen he said then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he should give him that he should give him this is what has killed a lot of people in our generation we are in a rush for everything that's why the spirit of wisdom the touch of wisdom is not upon our lives we're in a hurry to make money a hurry to do everything a hurry to get that job a hurry to do everything in life and so we don't consult with God we don't pray we don't have time to meditate to allow the wisdom of God to edit our lives the Bible says many are the counsel that are in a man's heart however it said many are the purposes in a man's heart however the counsel of the Lord that shall stand we never do anything as in, in a minute let me tell you something anybody that comes to meet you with anything in life in a rush run away quickly did you hear me run away quickly Daniel said uh -uh, king you are rushing this thing too much he said give me time if you give me time I will meditate and the Lord will reveal to me and I will tell you let me show you another scripture we'll soon get up and pray are you there Zupa kataparia kataba shambra dikata. Verse 19. He said, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. When he, he had time and he went in the night meditating upon this thing. And during the night time, not the night moment, the night time, this thing was revealed to him every time you take time see there is nothing that should compel your excessive hurrying in life because your hurrying in life will produce casualties that when you get to that place it will hurt you and those who have been walking slowly will come and pass you you see somebody running and is running on 200 and somebody's running on 120 the next thing they are bringing the mirror out of the bush and the man is sitting on the blood on the ground with blood and somebody who was going on 120 will come and pass and say sorry what was the rush for especially for some of us who are men make sure you think through don't make stupid decisions no matter how much you think you know the answer there is a way that cement right onto a man but see great leaders are not men of hasty decisions they think through no matter what the urgency is learn this is a big secret in life daniel said tell the king to give us time and this wisdom will work hallelujah the sacrifice of meditation everybody say i receive grace to meditate 
Some of the things you see today are the things that we get by meditation. This is how I get the messages for the week. I spend time, I pray, and I just sit in his presence. And allow this wisdom that cannot be found in the land of men. When that wisdom comes, you know accurately what it is that God wants you to do. Hallelujah. Number two, this wisdom manifests when you begin to speak or make decisions. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's not wisdom that is rehearsed. All of you, some of, please look at me, look at me. Let me show you that some of you have already been working in this thing. How many of you have had someone come to counsel you? I mean, somebody come for you to counsel the person. And you know that you are not married. Yet you are talking to couples about something there is no way you would have known. You didn't rehearse it. You didn't rehearse what to tell them. This is that wisdom. It's like you are prophesying. Somebody will ask you a question and you begin to speak. You are talking and for hours at the end of it you wish you recorded your message because you know you can't find it again. This is that dimension of wisdom. Are you listening to me? Somebody say I received that wisdom. Luke 21 verse 15. If you can project it using the amplified version. But let's just look at it. Luke 21 quickly. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight. In the name of Jesus. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Luke 21 verse 15. He said for i will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to resist nor gain say listen listen this wisdom begins to manifest when you are speaking it's not something that you have that you say i have it again. no the moment you open your mouth you will begin to utter things that are not of this realm hallelujah and so you go to your office and they are deliberating on a decision and many people are just bringing foolish theories that are not applicable and you keep quiet like anywho suddenly you will open your mouth he said open your mouth and i will feel it he didn't say i'll open your mouth when i feel it open your mouth and i will feel it suddenly you begin to communicate wisdom and they look at you my father calls me a young man with gray hair Ah, there is a dimension of wisdom that when you speak people will look at you and say no this cannot be wisdom that is accumulated by experience this is an impartation of this dimension of wisdom i pray in the name of the lord jesus that from today as you open your mouth to speak you will speak that order and that operation of wisdom many of you have used your mouth to close the doors of your destiny because what came out was foolishness not wisdom or what came out was just scientific knowledge i pray for someone tonight i pray for someone tonight may god make that when you meet your destiny helper the right words that will be upon your lips that will compel men there are many people today moving around with business proposals and they know what books say they should say but the Bible says, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece. Could this be what you need to tell your project supervisor for him to let you go with your work? Could this be that this is what you need to tell somebody to help you with capital for your business? Could it be that this is what you need to tell somebody to employ your loved ones? Let the opening of our lips utter wisdom that is beyond this realm so that you will be noted for that wisdom Matthew chapter 10 verse 19 to 20 we are running Matthew chapter 10 I feel the power of God in this place we are going to pray this this wisdom must hit somebody this night this wisdom must hit somebody this night someone must write it in your jota that on this day 
you encounter the dimension of wisdom that cannot be found in the land of the living verse 19 matthew 10 verse 19 but when they deliver you up that means when you are in trouble he said do not be anxious how or what you shall speak for it shall be given you in the same hour he said it shall be given to you when that means when you stand even if you don't know what to say some of you when they invite you to preach you are shaking you are saying oh god what will i say hold on hold that mic now with that spirit of wisdom and you will be amazed at the utterances that will come out of your lips verse 20 he said for it is not you that speak but the spirit of your father that does what speaks in you so although you have seen a man what is really happening is the spirit of god speaking through a man that's why you wait the man and wait the wisdom that is coming and say what wisdom is this i pray that in years to come this will be the testimony that they will produce a documentary on some of you and name it what wisdom is this you will do things that defy the wisdom of men that the world will celebrate you for it solomon operated in this dimension of wisdom there were two women who came two harlots one slept on a child and by that wisdom he deciphered accurately and the bible says his fame was spread abroad there is a level of wisdom that will ripple across territories people will share it let me tell you something people have mouths that can talk they can as well talk about your wisdom and say when it comes to brother so and so no this is a this this guy operates in a class of wisdom that is not known to men Doth not wisdom cry Doth not wisdom cry look at how solomon cried with this thing in the book of proverbs solomon said wisdom is begging people wisdom stands on the street and see many people looking for success Doth not wisdom cry wisdom was crying and said pay attention to me with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches but people will not listen the third way this wisdom manifests is through innovative and inspired ideas inspired thoughts job 32 verse 8 but there is a spirit in man and that spirit can bring inspiration everybody say inspiration that dimension of wisdom How did they build the tabernacle in the wilderness? Look at me. They were in the wilderness. There was no source of help. But they got wisdom from God. And they built the tabernacle. In the wilderness. Brothers and sisters, I can kneel down and beg you tonight. Do not trivialize the power of what I'm telling you. There are some messages until you get to certain realms, it may not be useful. But when you get to that realms, you can never be a leader without this. You will waste your time. There are many frustrated men of God who have power but don't have wisdom. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to be a leader. It takes wisdom to be a father. It doesn't take age. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to command prosperity. It doesn't take years of time. It takes this wisdom. lastly dreams and visions daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23 the bible says and the secret of the lord that secret was revealed to daniel in the vision of the night how many times have i laid down to sleep and in the visions of the night god opens things to me that cannot be found in this realm that's how some of these messages come see can i tell you something 
some of these great men like John Moen and the rest, the reason why some of their songs are timeless is because they came by this wisdom. It is this wisdom that transported it. There are others whose songs just came from musical acumen. So it will change as time changes. But there are others it comes with a spirit. The wisdom of God comes from the realm of eternity. That's why some of these messages are timeless. Even after 30 years, they will still be relevant because they come by the wisdom of God. There are some messages that have gone extinct. As the church of God is growing, they pack them and throw them away. But there are certain fathers of faith who have gone to be with the Lord. But their messages are timeless because they were a byproduct of this wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. He said, exalt and she shall promote you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 it says God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us so he spake to us in sundry times and in diverse manners communicates his wisdom to us an idea that people will be dying for in the night see do you know that Solomon received his wisdom in a dream if he had a roommate, the roommate will never know that something has happened. You just wake up in the morning. Come on now. Not the same person who slept. I pray that someone will sleep in the night as an ordinary person and wake up in the morning with an order of wisdom. I cried to God yes in my life. I said, Lord, I want you to give me this wisdom. This message I'm preaching to you tonight is an old message. It's an old message. I'm preaching to you my experience. I found this thing. And I said, come on, Lord. A 12-year-old boy. Lord, I'm available. Give me wisdom that is bigger than my level in life. Give me wisdom that is bigger than my experience. Give me wisdom that is bigger than everything I know. That wisdom will take you to a place where everybody around you is an elder except you. Yet they will give you a seat among the great. There are some of you, this wisdom will make, if you ever see your colleagues, it's just because you want to discuss with them. But as far as success is concerned, uh -uh, it will take you to a realm. Everybody uh, is far older than you. They'll say, how did you come this fast? It takes men years to do this. Exploits by this dimension of wisdom. through wisdom is any house built through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom there are times I'm meditating nobody distracts me because at that time the spirit of wisdom comes into my room and begins to bring illumination witty ideas inventions on common solutions that are not known to men hear me many of you will have it may not speak now because of the time component of life but wait until he starts speaking see there are some of you i tell you the truth zaria is too small for you everybody is watching you but you know that what is inside you is bigger than zaria is bigger than nigeria that young man called zuckerberg before facebook went far there were people who wanted to buy it before the idea became global and they wanted to buy it for eight billion he had not even become a millionaire then he was just they wanted to price his idea he said no i know this thing will shake the world eight billion is too small at that level see i tell you the truth in my mind i've left zaria in my mind i'm out of this country there are some of you the bible says there are some people this earth was not worthy of this earth was not worthy of you are seated in the crowd some of you as you are looking at me like this that's how one day you will sit down wisdom will give you a seat there are no vacant seats only the one wisdom creates the seats in nigeria have finished but wisdom can make room it can give you a seat i bring you a message 
stop wasting your life and wasting your time galloping in confusion you can walk circumspectly no matter what the price is pay it with wisdom and you will know you are paying it for the last time hallelujah rise up on your feet let us give our generation what our fathers did not give for the next five minutes we are going to cry i want you to take it serious you're going to cry your heart the bible says let him ask of god i have seen this in my life in a measure i can tell you there is something called the spirit of wisdom you will shock men lift your voice and begin to cry wisdom is the principal thing wisdom is the principal thing wisdom is the principal thing thank god for your degree but get wisdom thank god for phd but get wisdom thank god for books but get wisdom that divine ability to take the word of God and translate it come on pray sister pray my brother pray for the sake of your generation pray it say Lord I always knew I'm not ordinary Come on, pray like a warrior. Pray like a champion. Pray like a destiny shaker. You will do terrible things in righteousness. You will do terrible things. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. You will shock men. You will shock men in business. You will surprise people in entrepreneurship. You will bring for things that have never been done before in your career. You will excel through wisdom in your academics. Wisdom will give you a place that your age cannot give you. Wisdom will take you beyond your geographical limitation. Pray. 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 I receive this wisdom. Take it serious tonight. This is a destiny decision. Take it serious tonight. This can mean the difference between you and other people. Show close to me. A Korea top. Lord, change my life. Change my life. Change my life. I'm ready to leave the realm where I am to a higher realm. I am tired of this level of finances. Tired of this level of leadership. Tired of this level of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray right now and say, Lord, I receive a baptism of love for you and grace to bless your people. Lift your voice and pray. A baptism of love. A baptism of love. Beyond church. Beyond church. Beyond prayer meetings. 
a baptism of love with a fresh passion a fresh passion a fresh passion a fresh passion hallelujah 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 next prayer point you're going to say lord this night kill greed and self-centeredness from my life forever lift your voice and pray lord kill it greed self-centeredness take it away from my life that mentality of I, me, and myself. That mindset. You are just thinking of yourself. No, you will never access wisdom that moves. Go break the decay. I kill self-centeredness. In the name of Jesus, I consider others better than myself. The spirit of greed depart from God's people. This Nigerian mentality of greed, this Nigerian mentality of self-centeredness, be gone from us. We are the blessed ones, empowered to bless mankind. 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 Fire is burning in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I will read this and we'll take the last prayer point. I tell you, this wisdom is hitting somebody in this place. I know it. Some of you will write it from this night. Listen to me. Proverbs 18. I will read it. Oh my God. Some of you, your, your family will thank you on their knees. They will thank you. They will thank you. You may look like you are nothing. I don't care how your past has been. God specializes in using the things that people think. Some of you have failed so much in life. You don't ever think you can make it. I tell you, take advantage of this wisdom. And see how you will be in command of life. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me just read this quickly. Listen, Proverbs 18. This is wisdom speaking. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding standeth up, standeth, understanding put forth her voice. Listen, she stands at the top of high places. By the way of the places of paths, listen, she cries at the gates. And at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors, unto you, O oh men, I call. This is wisdom crying, calling for attention, calling businessmen for attention, calling entrepreneurs for attention, calling ministers for attention, calling family people. Wisdom is begging and saying, You have paid attention to other things. Can you not give me your attention? There is a baptism going on in this place this night. He said, All ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of understanding heart. Hear, for I speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. He said, All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing crooked. Wisdom that will take you above tricks and pranks receive my instruction verse 10 and not silver stop chasing money stop chasing money stop hustling you will waste your time 
even if you get it it will not be sustained it will give you high blood pressure it will give you stroke wisdom will give you success with rest listen 11 for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her he said i wisdom i dwell with prudence and i find out knowledge of witty inventions verse 14 we'll just read 14 to 16 and we'll stop listen it says counsel is mine there is no foolishness when you walk with me sound wisdom he said i am understanding and i have strength verse 15 by me kings reign kings don't reign by election are you hearing me by me kings reign this is wisdom telling you the things it has done by me kings reign and nobles and even the judges and princes decree justice by me princes rule and the nobles and all the judges of the earth listen 17 i love those who love me and those who seek me early shall find me those who seek me early those who seek me early hear this verse 18 final verse riches that men die for riches that men die for he said they are with me they are not in Aso rock they are not in london they are not in any bank i tell you they are with me riches and honor are with me yeah durable riches long lasting riches and righteousness we are going to pray final prayer point you are going to say lord let this wisdom fall on me many of you as you pray this prayer i tell you the wisdom of god will hit you some of you will sleep this night you will wake up with visions lift your voice and begin to pray let it fall oh god let it fall oh god wisdom from above make leaders with wisdom let it fall wisdom that will shock the world wisdom that will shock the business world wisdom that will shock the entrepreneurial world Aya. wisdom that will shock men in your career wisdom that will make your degree meaningful wisdom to produce a model family wisdom to live perpetually in health wisdom to command prosperity cry the wisdom is falling the wisdom is falling the wisdom is falling shake it take it take it take it, take it. Take it. Open the heavens, oh God. Open the heavens, oh God. Open the heavens, oh God. Receive a baptism. Shake a poriata. Koinonia. Be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. Koinonia. Be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. Koinonia. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let business moguls arise from this wisdom. Lead us. The true secret of kingdom success. The true secret of undeniable kingdom success. Shake it. Lift your hands, everybody. 
Lift your hands. See. Listen. Listen to me. I tell you something. Take this wisdom from my life and there is no Joshua Selman again. This is the mystery behind this young man you are seeing. If you can believe this, the day God told me I was not on stage, the day God gave it to me, you were not there. I tell you, students of the school of the spirit, I want to release upon you a key tonight. I want to release upon you something that will mark your life. For if you believe it, truly, you will receive. You can argue it. You can sit down there and watch others. Or you can humble yourself and say, Lord, this is it. This is it. My spirit tells me this is it. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Out of the abundance of grace that has been given. I want to pray. I pray. That as I declare, may it come upon somebody. Right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you gave me this message. This is the secret that scientists have not been able to discover. This is the realm that defies the limitation of man's wisdom. This is the true secret of kingdom success. We started building last week and I want to pray. I tell you the heavens are open in the name that is above all names. At the count of three, I tell you it will hit this building in a very mighty way. At the count of three, I just like you to shout after the count of three. I receive and begin to receive it in your life. It will change your life. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Lord, let it fall. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Shake it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it, a baptism, a fire, a baptism, the fire of wisdom, the fire. It comes from above. Let it change your status, the wisdom of Solomon. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Shake it, 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 it. Be marked with wisdom. Be marked with wisdom in business. Be marked with wisdom in your job. Be marked with wisdom. Wisdom to speak. Wisdom to preach. Wisdom to attract wealth. Wisdom to attract honor. Wisdom for health. Take this wisdom and rescue your families. Take this wisdom and change your CGPA. Take this wisdom and change your marital status. Take this wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take this wisdom and end poverty in your life forever. Take this wisdom and stop begging forever. Take this wisdom and be in command. Command in ministry. Command in business. Command in your place of work. Command in your home. You may be the last born, but let this wisdom take you to the front hallelujah hallelujah i pray for you tonight as many of you sleep i declare the experience of solomon let it happen to you in the name of jesus May the angels of wisdom visit you. May the God who gave Solomon wisdom impart you tonight.
that business idea you have been praying and fasting for tonight let it come by wisdom in your place of meditation let leadership wisdom come upon you hallelujah I pray for you the same way the cattle of Jacob were spotted so that anywhere you saw them you knew that these were Jacob's cattle I pray for you because you have come for koinonia tonight favor has been our mark in this place but to that favor I add wisdom to you I add wisdom to you Go ahead and give God thanks. Go ahead. Thank Him. I tell you, something has happened to you this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spend time. Spend time meditating. Stop running around. Where are you going? Say, I'm looking for money. No. Go back to your secret place. May God raise wealthy people here. Amen. You know what to do with money, so God is not afraid of giving you. I pray that one favor connection. Don't say, I am young. That's a curse. I pray to you, receive it. Amen. Ladies, don't say we are ladies. Receive it in the name of Jesus. hallelujah listen you are here and you've not given your heart to the Lord what a night that God is releasing wisdom I want to pray for you right now or you have given your heart to the Lord once but you've really found yourself distracting you, are, you have been distracted here and there the author of wisdom is calling you tonight for a fresh start Please make sure you do not hear this voice tonight and just take it lightly because God is doing great things. If you are not born again, you do not have access to this wisdom. I don't care even if you fell down. It doesn't work that way. So to make it right with God or make a first time decision for God, please leave your seat and come out here right now. Right now. There's anybody like that, leave your seat and come out here right now. And I will pray with you. In one minute, we have people like that. Very quickly. I'll give you one minute quickly. We're out of time. Anyone making this glorious decision? Don't be ashamed. Appreciate her. Bless you, sister. Bless you, sister. Bless you, my brother. I see you coming. Keep appreciating them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. You are encountering true wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming out. This is unto the Lord your maker. You will mark this day as a turning point in your life. Lift your hands and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I ask you tonight, to be the Lord of my life I repent of my sins and my old ways I declare that from today I'm saved I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me and grant me this great wisdom from today I am a different person in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father thank you you have brought these ones by your spirit change them let this not just be an emotional experience change them in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you listen you will never lack wisdom in your life again in the name of Jesus Christ you are blessed please follow the ushers in one minute they'll have your details and we'll follow you up tomorrow 
by 5 p.m. at chapel. God bless you. Thank you, sister. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. We'll soon be out of here. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first night here in Koinonia. I'd like you to leave your seat and come out gloriously. We want to bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Bless you. Bless you, my appreciate them. Bless you. Come on, Koinonia. This is not your best. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord brought you here to access wisdom. The Lord brought you here to access wisdom. Hallelujah. Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We celebrate you. Thank you for coming. The Lord brought you here to bless you. Hallelujah. How many of you were blessed today? Thank you so much. Do something with what you have received. You can be emotional about this teaching and it will never change you. But if you do something with it, no power in existence can stop it. Hallelujah. We are anointed people and we want to pray for you. If we pray for you, you are blessed. I tell you, saints of God, stretch your hands as we pray for them. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. We command that you will go back with instant testimonies. You will know that God is in this place. We bless you with a fresh hunger for God. We bless you for depth of, we bless you with hunger for deep spiritual things. We bless you with wisdom. You will go back with a traceable mark of wisdom in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore ELI You can also download our messages on www.foreshared.com Eternity Network International Duplicating the fullness of God's life and earth